welcome to the next tutorial in power system analysis uh, we are going to discuss the regulation and efficiency of the trans transmission line the power unit system and the single line diagram the first question is a single phase transmission line has a resistance of 0 0.20 ohms and inductive reactance of 0 0.40 ohms determine the voltage at the sending end to give 500 kva at 2 kilo volt at the receiving end under the condition that the power factor is unity that is the case 1 and case 2 is 0 0.707 lagging power factor. In the second part of the question we have to determine the voltage regulation and the efficiency of the line for the two different cases. Let us see the solution. So since the transmission line is single phase the parameters that are given is for one conductor that is the per conductor. So we have been given the values of the resistance and the inductive reactance. The voltage and the power at the load that is at the receiving end is given that is 2 kV and 500 kVA. We have to first determine what is the current that is flowing through the circuit or the transmission line. So we can determine the current from the power formula. So we have the complex power or the apparent power that is 5 kVA divided by the voltage. So that will give us the current whatever is flowing in the transmission line. So we, we have got the current that is flowing in the transmission line is 250 ampere. So 250 ampere is the current which is flowing in the transmission line. Now under the condition of unity power factor we have to determine what is the sending and voltage. So if the power factor is unity cos phi is 1 it means the value of phi is equal to 0 and sin phi is equal to 0. Now the relationship between the sending end to the receiving end in terms of the Kirchhoff's voltage law we can write it as the sending end voltage square is equal to the voltage drop in the registic part plus the voltage drop in the reactive part. So using this relationship substituting the values of the known quantities we can get what is the sending end voltage. So we will get the sending end voltage as 2052.43 volt. Now the regulation at the unity power factor condition formula is what is the sending end voltage minus the receiving end voltage with the base value as the receiving end voltage. So sending end voltage we have computed whereas the receiving end voltage is already given in the problem as 2 kilo volt we can determine the regulation in percentage as 2.61 percent. Now what is the efficiency at the UPF condition? So we know the formula for efficiency as the power output by power input multiplied with 100 to convert into percentage. Now the input power can be represented as the output power plus losses. Output power is already given to us. We have to first calculate the losses in the transmission line which is equal to I square R. The current value we have computed and the resistance is already given. It means the losses is 1200, 500 watt. So net uh, loss in the transmission line we have computed. So we can determine the efficiency. So power output can be written as the apparent power that is volt ampere multiplied with the power factor or otherwise we can write the receiving end voltage multiplied with the receiving end current multiplied with the power factor. Both are the same thing and then uh, the denominator part we can add up the output plus losses. So substituting the known values we will get the efficiency to be 97.5 percent. So these are under the UPF condition and under second case that is the lagging power factor condition of 0 0.707 we can obtain the regulation and the efficiency only one thing will change is the power factor that is cos phi is 0 0.707 so we can get the regulation as 5.3 percent and the efficiency as 96.5 percent when the power factor is changed next problem a three-phase synchronous generator which is delivering 10 megavolt ampere at a voltage of 10.5 kilovolt. The line impedance is given to us as 5 ohms. Determine the voltage drop in the line per unit using the reference value of 12 MVA and 11.11 11 kV. So this is the complex power base 
and this is the voltage base. So we can write KV base. We have to determine the voltage drop in the line. So this problem has to be solved in the per unit system. So the apparent power that is being delivered is given to be 10 MVA and the generator voltage is 10.5 kilovolt. The base value of the power is given to be 12 MVA and the base voltage is 11 kV. It means we have to determine the base power which is the actual power divided by the base power. So the actual power is 10 MVA divided by the base power which we can take it as 8 and we will get 0.833 as the per unit power in complex or the apparent power. The kilovolt per unit that is the voltage per unit is basically the actual value by the base value which is equal to 0.9545. So we have got the power and the voltage in per unit. Now the actual impedance it is given to be 5 ohms. It means the per unit value of the impedance which is actual by base value but base value we need to compute first from the voltage base and the power base. So KV base whole square divided by MBA base will give us the impedance base which is equal to 10.08 ohms. Hence the per unit impedance which is equal to actual value by base value. Actual value is 5 ohms and the base value we have computed as 10.08 which is giving us 0.496 ohm as the base impedance. Now the current in per unit is basically the power base by voltage base which is giving to us as 0.873. Once we have determined the current and the impedance in per unit, we, have, we can determine the voltage drop which is equal to current multiplied with the impedance and both should be in per unit system which is equal to 0.433. So this is the voltage drop in the system under the per unit condition which is equal to 0.433. Next problem, problem third. A 10 kV transmission line has a series impedance of 4.4 plus J60 ohm and a sunt admittance of J0.002 Siemens. Calculate per unit impedance and per unit admittance of the line under the two different case that is first case is 100 MVA and the line voltage as the base value. Under the second condition you have to use the base power as 150 MVA and 20 kV as the base value. So two different conditions we have to determine the per unit impedance and per unit admittance of the line. So under the case 1 the base power is 100 MVA and the base voltage is 10. So the base impedance is basically kB base square by MVA base which is equal to 1 ohm. The per unit impedance is the actual value by the base value. So we are getting 4 plus J60 that is will be in per unit because the base value is equal to 1 ohm. The admittance base is the reciprocal of the impedance base which is also equal to 1. It means the per unit of the admittance will be equal to the actual value of the admittance divided by the base value. So we will be getting the per unit value of the admittance. Under the case 2 the power and voltage has now changed. So it is 150 MVA and 20 kV. So the new jet per unit condition from the old condition we know the formula. This formula we have to use that is jet per unit new is equal to z per unit old into the change in the power that is MVA base new by MVA base old multiplied with the change in the voltage that is kV base old square by kV base new square. We have to substitute the values of the known quantities so we can get the per unit of the Z that is the impedance when the power and voltage are changed. Similarly we can determine the admittance also so that will be also changing because the admittance old value is different and the power has changed from new to old conditions. So we can get 2.997 into 10 to the power minus 3 per unit as the admittance per unit for the new case. So two different cases we are getting two values for the impedance and the admittance. Next problem, we have been given a single line diagram of a radial transmission system. The rating and the reactance of the various components are shown. 
the load is given as 60 MVA at 0 0.9 power factor lagging condition. So here we have the load condition of the bus and it is tapped from a 66 kV substation which is to be maintained at 60 kV. So the load bus is maintained at 60 kV. Calculate the terminal voltage of the synchronous machine. So here we have the synchronous machine whose terminal voltage we have to determine. So this will be at voltage V1. Represent the transmission line and the transformer by the series reactance only. So we have the synchronous machine as the sending end and load at the receiving end with two transformer connected with a transmission line. The rating of the transformer and the reactance per unit value of the transformers are given. So both the transformers are of 100 MVA power. Let us see how to determine it. So first we have to choose certain base values. So let us choose the base value power as 100 MVA. The base voltage for the generator is 11 kV. For the transmission line it is 220 kV and for the load it is 66 kV. So the reactance calculation for the two transformers T1 and T2 we have to obtain it which is already given in the problem that is 10% and 8%. For the transmission line we have to obtain the reactance so actual value by the base value we have to divide it to get the transmission line per unit reactance which is equal to 0 0.31 per unit. The load power is 60 megawatt. So it is equal to 0 0.6 in per unit system and it is under 0 0.9 power factor lagging condition. So the voltage at the receiving end V2 is equal to the power divided by the voltage, power divided by the current. So we can get the 0 0.909 as the voltage at the receiving end or the load end. So the current which is flowing is basically with an angle of 0 0.9 power factor lagging condition will get minus 25.8 and we can determine the magnitude of the current which is equal to 0 0.667 and in the power unit system. Now we can apply the KVL equation to determine the sending and voltage which is equal to V1. So V2 is the receiving and voltage and there will be some losses in the transmission line reactances which we have to take it. So V1 is the sending end voltage, V2 is the receiving end voltage and all the reactances we have to add up multiplied with the current will get the losses. So net voltage is equal to 1.09 angle 15.6 and this is under the per unit condition. So if you want to determine the magnitude of the voltage actual value, this is equal to the per unit value multiplied by the base value will get 12 kV as the voltage of the sending end, the actual value of the line. Next problem, given the single line diagram of a power system and the ratings of all the machines that is being connected in the single line diagram, we have the generator, motor and two transformers. So, neglecting the resistance and using a base of 100 MVA 220 kV in the 50 ohm transmission line, we have to determine the ratings of the generator, motor and the transformer which are already given to us and determine the per unit impedance diagram. So, we have to convert the actual value into the per unit values and then we have to draw the react reactance diagram or the impedance diagram in the per unit system. So the base power is 100 MVA for the generator. Now the base voltage for the line, that is transmission line for the generator and the motor will be different due to the presence of the transformer at the two different lines of the transmission line. So here we have a transformer T1 and here we have a transformer T2. So this side of the generator the voltage will be different and towards the length, uh, line of the tra uh, transmission line, the voltage will be different because of the transforming action of the transformer. Similarly, the voltage of this side of the line and the voltage of the motoring side will be different because of the transformation ratio of this transformer. So we have to determine the base voltage for the line that is 220 kV and for the generator and the motor with respect to the turns ratio 
of the two transformer T1 and T2. Once we have got the voltage, we can determine the reactances of the generator, the reactance of the motor and the reactance of the two transformer T1 and T2 and the reactance of the transmission line using the known formula of the reactances. So using the formula of the per unit system that is the impedances old base and the impedance new base we can determine the generator reactance is 0 0.287 the motor reactance is 0 0.6 the transformer T1 and T2 reactances of 0 0.375 and 0 0.5 and the transmission line is 0 0.103 once we have obtained the reactance in per unit system we can draw the reactance diagram starting from the generator voltage that is eg in series with the reactance of the generator then we have the transformer t1 then we have the transmission line then we have the transformer t2 and then we have the motor and its reactance so all the per unit reactances that we have computed we have to substitute in the reactance diagram and that will complete the solution for this particular problem. So we have seen how to obtain the per unit system and how to determine the regulation and efficiency of transmission line. Thank you. See you in the next tutorial.